I'm making the best sandbox automation game the world has ever seen. And after completely starting from scratch because I decided that Unity wouldn't cut it, which might have been a slight overreaction, here we now are. What exactly have we got here again? It's been a while. Right, the voxel terrain which I can break in place. Pretty happy with that if I'm being honest. Now it's just time to build the actual game on top of this as the foundation. But hold on for a second, what have I spotted there? Or rather, not spotted there. Where does the terrain even go when I break it? Could it be that it doesn't actually go anywhere, but it rather gets compressed by the immense force of the player so much that it turns into a tiny black hole that immediately evaporates through Hawking radiation? But probably it's just time to make an inventory that the terrain can go into when I break it. Yeah, I think that sounds reasonable. I'd say we jump right into the technical stuff. Let's start simple with a base inventory class. It stores an array of item stacks which each consist of an item type, defining whether it's a stack of, for example, wood, rock or whatever you get it at the hands on really. And then we'll also need to know how many items of the type are in a stack. I did also already put a metadata object here. That's not yet fully implemented though. The plan would be to allow items like tools to store additional per stack information like durability or maybe special tags. Then, of course, I also have a bunch of helper functions here to manage the item stacks and I also made a listening system that allows the UI and networking system to subscribe to single item stacks in order to update the UI or send network updates to the clients respectively. With that system, I am currently not completely satisfied though, as I would like to move the actual subscribing part onto the inventory so that the stacks only have to report to their parent inventory and that inventory can bunch up those updates and broadcast them to the listeners, but for now I'll leave it the way it is. There is however one more thing about this system that I'm not really happy with. The fact that the item stacks are stored as direct values. I originally built it this way so I wouldn't have random references to item stacks floating around somewhere, but I have yet to come up with a decent system to enable the convenient handling of item stacks outside of the inventory they're in. Right now that might not be a big deal since I'm the only one working with it and I know what to look out for. At some point I do want to provide a nice and straightforward framework for modding though. So until then I'll have to figure something out. That's a topic for another day though. With the inventory class I got now, I can just create different versions of inventories for all my use cases. Take for example this one which I made specifically for players. It has a reference to the player controller to show the UI to and it also has a second inventory within itself. The cursor inventory. Yup, I decided to have a completely separate inventory for the single item stack that sticks to the cursor when the player picks up items in the UI. This actually makes a lot of other stuff like serialization much easier since I can just ignore the cursor inventory altogether. After all, I don't really want cursor item stacks to be saved. It would be kinda weird if you open your inventory and there would be a stack floating around at your cursor already. So instead I would just drop the items. Also speaking of the UI, let's finally address this beautiful work of art which I literally made without creating a single art asset. Apart from the item icons, of course. Difficult to believe that I am not particularly skilled with drawing, I know. I merely used simple shapes to stitch together the different menus in the UI editor. But I think for now it looks definitely okay. Behind the scenes of the UI, I've got a class for all the inventory widgets, with my own logic allowing you to move items around and I even implemented some more advanced actions like splitting up stacks by dragging over the inventory, shift left clicking to immediately move whole stacks from one inventory to another and alt left clicking to move all stacks of the same type. Oh right, and to sort of interface between the Blueprint UI editor and my C++ code, I actually utilized the Blueprint scripting, so that I can now create a new inventory widget Blueprint, design it in the editor, set up all the item slots through the Blueprint scripting via some helper functions, and then just work with them from the comfort of C++, which I much prefer. And just like that, I can pick up item stacks and move them around. Both item stacks notify the UI that they've changed and the widget logic does the rest. Then one more little detail about the item stacks, they actually all have their own item stack widgets placed within the inventory widgets, which actually display the item type icon and the text with the number of items in the stack. 
which also allows me to make different types of item stack widgets, for example one for tools that would also show the durability. So overall I am pretty happy with how the inventory and UI systems came together and I hope you were able to get some new knowledge, inspiration or really just entertainment out of this as well. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.